As with any rumor and speculation, we should take them all with a grain of salt. We don't know even if this is truly the finished project or not. It's clearly a game that's still in alpha, so a lot of the assets aren't even finished, nor most of the HUD seems to be completed. So Dragon Age Dreadwolf, this is a game that has been in development for years and years, with one project canning due to Anthem. And now they are using Anthem's code base for this next upcoming Dragon Age game. Don't ask why. Many fans thought we would be seeing something in 2022, but still nothing. And now we have the year of 2023. As many people guessed, we were going to see people leak out gameplay and articles following this type of information, which is really letting people know that yes, this is a game that is playable and currently in alpha. But with that, let's begin. An article posted on February 3rd by Insider Gaming titled Exclusive New Details on Dragon Age Dreadwolf Revealed. It states two sources have revealed that some of these multiplayer components are still sensed to some degree in the current build of the game, with one source saying the game felt a bit like Destiny with the central hub where players could probably regroup before heading into the next mission. The game's hub though will still play a vital role in Dreadwolf in its single player format. One thing to note that seemed worrying was that if this article is comparing it to Destiny I can only imagine, Anthem's code bases within this game might still be intact. I would hate to see the MMO type of mission instead of a narrative gameplay, but hey, that's just what I would expect from this project being canned so many times. They might go save time by coding it similar to Anthem, I just don't like where they're going with this in the article. They also state Dreadwolf follows a similar gameplay loop to its predecessors, which will involve recruiting and growing your crew, whom you'll encounter by completing missions. Your recruited crew will populate your hub where you can give them different pieces of equipment and modifications as your progress throughout the game. It's understood that you'll be able to move from your hub to missions by passing through a mirrored portal. Mirrored portal? Uh, come on guys, it's an alluvian. Bruh. Lastly, which surprised me and many other fans was this. As for combat, one source who recently played the game suggested that it was more akin to a hack and slash compared to past games. And the game's combat wheel is similar to that of the one in Final Fantasy 15. As for your crew, it was said that you currently cannot control them and that only select the ability that can cast in combat. I mean, I'm not too shocked that we now cannot control our characters compared to what we did in previous Dragon Age games, I still suspect and many others that it's just because of it being early, but it actually seems that might not change. Again, that's not too much of a big deal, well at least somewhat, because it will remind me and many others of Mass Effect's combat for companions and I really had no issue gameplay wise with that. With the Final Fantasy 15 combat wheel, that really shocked me to be honest, but y'all came for the leaks and we're gonna go straight to them because that combat wheel doesn't mean too much when we see these types of screen caps. The leak originally was posted on the Dragon Age subreddit by the user Revan Chisto titled, I have seen Dragon Age 4 alpha gameplay, details inside. They state, the recent article by Tom Henderson prompted me to make this post instead of responding to every reply in that thread. I'll just describe what I saw overall here. I was honestly shocked when we got no gameplay reveal at the Game Awards, as I was sure we would get something considering the timing this video was shared with me. Background, a kind playtester shared the recorded gameplay of Dragon Age 4 that was in early alpha at that stage. I saw that they recorded before they were shuffled to another project. No, I will not share the video as the individual in question asked me not to, and until I get their permission, it will remain private. Alright, so now to what's in this video. It's about 20 minutes of gameplay involving one segment and dungeon. The entire gameplay is set within the Grey Warden Fortress headquarters of Weishaupt. That's what the location text literally says. Now again, the gameplay is alpha, so there isn't a whole lot of detail detail and there are missing textures for a lot of elements. Basically the buildings and whatnot are all modeled and textured but the skybox itself is very dark and makes it seem as though the entire fortress is underground, although it is clearly not. I suspect the skybox could contain some giant world event similar to the breach. The player character is an elvish knight class. The character screen actually says they are a mid-level grey warden though. They've got a sword and a shield. They also have a two party members, another knight dude and a female dwarf rogue. I suspect both models are placeholders and that they won't actually look like they do in the final game. Darkspawn are currently attacking Weishaupt and there are roots all over the place alongside Red Lyrium popping up here and there. Oddly, the Darkspawn also apparently are infused with Red Lyrium and have Red Lyrium attacks and some have red eyes. The objective is to fight through the Darkspawn to get to the library, but as you are doing so there is a big ass dragon attacking from above. Because you know, it is Dragon Age and the dragon creates an occasional environmental 
and traversal hazards. It ends once you reach the library close to the gates, and then come face to face with the dragon. It appears you are then supposed to try and chain the dragon up, but it ends before the player completes that. There is no audio, and while there are subtitles, they are mostly glitched and frozen, so you can't tell what people are saying during cutscenes or combat. And lastly, Revan bullet points what the general overview of the gameplay was. Combat is completely in real time and similar to hack and slash. I'm told the guiding reference point was God of War of 2018, and that shows. Player has their regular combo attack, and then their abilities as well as a special bar which generates, allowing you to pull off a special move. I don't really understand the comparison to the Final Fantasy XV's wheel, because it's a standard Dragon Age ability wheel. Again, there was no party control demonstrated. I think it's a safe bet to say you will not be able to directly control your party's member in the game. That said, you likely will be able to tell them to execute certain abilities, but apparently that was locked off in the alpha. The most immediate thing you notice is that the animation quality has drastically improved. Like for any other AAA title, it's probably not that big of a deal, but we've never seen animation quality this good in any Bioware game. No more stiff animation, it's all very fluid and seems to be also very responsive. Jumping has also been retained, so rejoice if you enjoy jumping a lot in Dragon Age Inquisition. As the character has a sword and a shield, he was able to parry attacks from enemies and follow up with counters. It's hard to tell their exact abilities, they only had on two hotkeys along with a special one, but one appears to be basically a drop kick and the other a charged sword attack. I'm not sure exactly what the special attack does. The UI is also similar to Dragon Age Inquisition, but this is also alpha and the UI is the last thing finalized in any game. Character has a chest slot, a helmet slot, and a primary weapon slot, and a shield, plus a secondary weapon slot. For accessories, one amulet slot, one belt slot, and two ring slots. Oh, and the player character's hair look glorious. I mean, it was clipping right through their helmet, but it was flowing and bouncing as they moved. Finally, no more stiff ass hair. Now let's hope we have more than just two black hairstyles. Enemies were pretty much just variations of Darkspawn, except the dragon, but again, they seem to have red lyrium powers. Alright, so there you have it. These are the gameplay leaks. I can definitely break down some here that wasn't mentioned. Again, these are screen caps from 20 minutes of gameplay, including some GIFs attached. For one thing to note, we see the name Davrin, who was shown at Gamescon back in 2020. They are voiced by Ike Amadi. They are known to be a warden-like class, so again, it's double confirmed that he's a companion in Dreadwolf. Rook, who I'm guessing is the dwarven rogue, seems to be a new companion, perhaps a warden commander at Weishaupt. The details and background looked visually stunning, of course, which should come to no surprise since Frostbite is visually great environmental-wise. I know we aren't seeing too much, but it does look pretty cool. As for the last screenshot for equipment, I was squinting to see what exactly these like leaf things were. I know for sure that the things are blurred will be revealed soon. Hero blank looks to be pretty interesting, but I'm not too sure why some other things are blurred out. As for the hair comment, to hear that it's so much better makes me want to jump up and down because damn, Inquisition really did us dirty with their hair choices. But yeah, what do y'all think of this gameplay leak? Are you excited or are you still timid? I'm going to take a guess. I might see some 50-50 reactions here in the comments. First impressions wise, I kind of cringed, but now that I'm looking more into it, it looks pretty cool, but I would love to see more. But with that, we are going to wrap up. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.